Land Between the Lakes is a national recreational area in both the states of Kentucky and Tennessee. It covers 170,000 acres. It's 40 miles long and six to eight miles wide. It was designated as a national recreational area in 1963 by President Kennedy. But this area of both Kentucky and Tennessee was created the same way that Lake Lanier was created. Another story that we covered here on this Esoteric Explorer series. Because you see, in 1944, the Cumberland and Tennessee rivers were impounded to create Kentucky Lake and Lake Barkley. These two lakes form one of the world's largest man-made bodies of water. And today, this area, this peninsula that is inland United States, is one of the most lawless areas in the world. There are stories of witches' covens, vampire hotels, and cryptid creatures from the beyond. People go missing here all the time. And as many locals will tell you, even though this is federal land, it's been left to rot. Because it's a right. peninsula. It's a literal peninsula uh -huh. in the middle of the United States, inland United States. Yes. So this entire green area, this is LBL, Land Between the Lakes, which was originally the natives called it Land Between the Rivers. Yes. Um, if you can see my cursor here, this is the Cumberland River on this side, which is now Lake Barkley. And then on this side, you have the Tennessee River, which is now Kentucky Lake. Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. If you're joining me from Gnostic TV and this is the first time you've been on my YouTube channel, please, please, please do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel too because I also upload deep dives onto YouTube as well as Gnostic. If you're just following me here on YouTube, we did release, Derek and I did a part one, um, just a basic information about LBL because Derek here... This is his, this is his territory. He's from this area. So, yeah. <laughs> so we talked about like the vampire hotel. We talked about like the old towns, everything, you know, that's gone on, how LBL land between the lakes came to be because it wasn't always land between the lakes, all that kind of stuff. So if you missed part one over on Gnostic, you can follow the link below to Gnostic TV to watch part one on my Esoteric Explorer series over on Gnostic TV. But before we get into the juicy, juicy details of this crazy piece of land that here is here in the United States, first of all, how are you two doing today? How are you guys doing during this Mercury retrograde, crazy, crazy April we got going on? I am doing, I'm doing good. good. Yeah, <laughs> doing good. 
Jinx. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, before we get started, though, another housekeeping before we get into the story. Make sure um, Derek has reopened a YouTube channel, The Sunbeamer. So please make sure you're subscribed to Derek. I know he's got some ideas for future future channels as well, which we will keep you guys posted once he um, opens up even more channels, but make sure you're subscribed to Derek on the Sunbeamer. That will be linked down below under show notes. And then, of course, Jessica is, can you guys see that I changed it? Did, did the Zoom let it change to the Cryptid Huntress? Do you guys see that, the Cryptid Huntress? Yes. Okay, cool. Sometimes Zoom won't won't change the screen. But, of course, Jessica, you guys know her. She's over on the Cryptid Huntress. And both Jessica and I have backup chan channels over on the big, the big Rumble. Um, so please make sure as we move deeper into the craziness and the chaos of, of our world, please make sure you are subscribed to any backup channels just in case. So guys, where should we start with part two of Land Between the Lakes? Where do y'all want to start? I was going to say either Jessica can start with her remote viewing or... I, so I never knew about the the Beast until recently. But this past summer, I had an experience that <clears throat> I was already thinking that there was some type of like monster demon on the property. So I, I could tell that story or we can go the other way. Um, let's hear your story first. So from a okay. first hand account, and then we'll get into the story behind uh, some of the encounters there and deaths that have happened on that property. And we'll talk about the remote viewing data after that. I would love that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this past summer, I was looking at a property that was literally right outside of LBL in Dover, Tennessee. And this was during the time that I was running an Airbnb. And I saw this, like, it was like 80, 84 acres. And this, like, it was like, it was beautiful. I was like, this would be an awesome place to do like a campground. Um, just coming up with ideas. So I go and I look at this property and, um, it was so beautiful. I was just like laying on the ground, like, just like, wow, this is amazing. Okay. Well, after I left, I started getting really, really like strange feelings and like to the point that, um, like I went into like a full, like three day, like three day haunting. And th this has happened many times in my life and to where like it'll be a three-day period where i won't sleep because i'm so scared i can't even go to sleep and this was one of those times and like at night i i could see um like i i think something followed me like or like attach itself on from that property i could see i like glowing eyes in the woods here where i live right now i i was hearing this like loud like high-pitched screeching noise and like that is not a bird i'm like <laughs> I'm like, this is like a full blown, like screech. Like I had never heard this type of sound before. And, um, and so like, and how stuff comes in for me is like, it's kind of like it psychically comes in, but in a way that like, it starts to feel real. So I, I started like being so scared and I'm like, okay, I, I knew that it was somehow connected to, to this property right outside of LBL. And it, it even so, so afterwards, like, I stopped talking about the property and my, I told my parents about it. My parents were like, what happened with that, with the Dover property? I'm like, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm like, maybe one day I'll tell you like kind of what happened, but, and so that, that was really like it, but from that I knew, or like, I started seeing stuff with like, um, like CIA black magic, um, stuff to do with like them using the, kentucky dam the energy coming from the dam like to invert energy and i don't know like essentially i was making all this stuff up in my mind you know from the psychic energy that was coming in and then whenever i heard about th there being like a beast there i'm like yo i'm like this all connects so perfectly so that's just kind of my story nothing crazy but i did psychically start to feel like there was something there without having any information before um, and then the last thing is like, so like two weeks ago, my brother-in-law told me a story about, he was out on a boat on Kentucky Lake. And he said that he saw a black bear on LBL and there's no black bears there. And, but he even called in and the, I think this was like two years ago when he saw it. I just heard the story like a couple, maybe three weeks, maybe a month ago, um, two to four weeks ago, he was over here picking up the kids and he told me about it. 
Um, but he even called LBL and like reported it. But it, there's no it, there's no black there's bears. Bears. <laughs> So there's there's hogs, there's wild hogs, but there are no bears. Yeah, no bears. <laughs> <laughs> All wow. right. Jess, what what do you got? Okay. What what's your what's your inside scoop? What's the oh my gosh? What's the gossip? Okay, Derek, you're a, you're so on target with what's going on up there uh, with what you experienced because you're not the only one that's experienced stuff like that. Yeah. Um, now there's a, a very well known story in the cryptid community about the LBL uh, where there's particularly one story of one family who was mauled to death by a potential dog man or see the beast of LBL is actually a dog man or a werewolf type of creature. Um, so I, I've been, you know, I do this thing called remote viewing and I, I look into to cases, you know, I'm given these blind targets and, uh, and I get a whole bunch of information out of these like coordinate numbers. Okay. And, uh, and one of those targets happened to be the beast of LBL. Um, okay. So, not only do people, when people go to this area, now uh, the land between the lakes, as you guys have probably stated on the other show, it's over 170,000 acres of woodland, okay, of lakes. Uh, there's, a, there's a big lake. It used to be called, what was it called? The the lakes, something. It had a different name. It wasn't called the land between the lakes. It was like called the river between the lakes or something yeah, like they that. They used to call it the land between the rivers. The land between the rivers. I, I was all jumbled up there. Um, but yeah, it's, there's, there's different, there, I mean, it's a huge plot of land, a big, big area. And people have reported uh, dogman sightings, Sasquatch sightings, uh, UFO ET activity, all that kind of fun stuff is going on out there. Um, but back in the 1980s, 1982, for to be exact, um, there's an alleged... And I believe it's real. I believe it happened. Um, an alleged incident where a family went to go camp there at the land between the lakes. And uh, and they they had a their camper. It was a mom and dad and a son and a daughter. And they went to a campground and they were the only ones there. And at some point after they got there, um, they were mauled to death by something. Okay. And it was it was like ripped to shreds all all four of them now just um, for our audience is this is this the incident that's actually referred to as the massacre yes oh, okay so people want to look yeah they, there's actually an, they have a they call it the massacre like this is how this is how big this story is there's actually a name for it they, they literally call it the massacre it's crazy yes yeah, so so i was given this um given this massacre as an rv target a remote viewing target and uh and it was so disturbing to me what I was seeing it took me a while to process what I was remote viewing because I couldn't understand what I was seeing I was seeing what looked like a hyena it was almost like a hyena type humanoid okay and it wasn't like your normal just werewolf looking dog man thing but this this it looked like a, a, I even drew a picture of it. it it looks like a hyena type dog man and I think there were two of them that came out of the woods. I actually have on my, on my map. I, I drew a sketch and everything. I have like a little map where the they came out of the woods. I think it surrounded the 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 camper. It was like a vehicle with something pulling behind it. Is what the drawing is, and you can see like where the things came in and then where they left. <clears throat> but so I I couldn't have gotten this data if this wasn't real. <laughs> okay, so I do believe it happened. But I was so disturbed by whatever I was seeing, I asked the person who had tasked me the target. I was like, what exactly happened? What is this? And they referred me to, I think it was the head of the North American Dogman Project. And so I actually, con and I'm going to get into the story of exactly what happened. But um, but before I do that, I want to tell you that I did contact the head of the North American Dogman Project. And uh, and I told him what I had done. I had I was a remote viewer and I had looked into this incident. And he, and I kind of I sent him my data so he could see it. And he said, well... He's like, actually, we've I've done a video on this. We did a documentary on this, uh, and I, and he sent it to me, and I got to watch his documentary after that, where they actually interviewed people from the LBL, people who live in the area outside the area, uh, and they talk about the the day and the night that happened uh, from firsthand reports and witnesses who talked to the law officials who were involved in the event. 
Uh, so, uh, of course, there's people that claim like, oh, no, it's all made up. It never happened because there's no record of it. Okay, this was wiped clean. There's no record anywhere. Uh, just a couple of eyewitness accounts uh, of people who encountered the police officers out there. Um, after, I mean, so. So that's how so I guess becomes urban go. legend, right? It becomes folklore because yeah. they, they wipe the record. Yes. Well, yeah. there have been, there's a lot of, there's a lot of missing people out of that land between the lakes area. A lot of yeah. missing people. It's um, <clears throat> They have missing people and mysterious deaths. A lot of them where people are found uh, mauled to death, their bodies ripped apart, you know, um, or just never found. A lot of people go missing and they're never found from there. Yeah. So, OK, well, if you want to get into the massacre uh, and, and if there's any children watching, it's kind of you might not want to have them well, listen to, get into that, just to be clear because i you know i had never heard of a dog man before i met you like i think most people we know bigfoot we know so a dog man as you're saying that just so people have it in their mind not our dog men we did we and if you guys go back and reference some of our old videos i'll link them down below they're different types of bigfoot some seem a little bit more friendly than others but our dog men notoriously jessica are they notoriously more on the violent side actually no Really, not my, not in my experience, but they they're characterized like that, okay? Because uh, I know a lot of people who have had firsthand encounters, and I I have not had a firsthand encounter not yet with, with a dog man. Uh, I have with Bigfoot and all the other ones, but the dog man, from what from the way people describe it, a lot of times they're just there. They you see a dog man and it just looks at you and it's almost like telepathically they're like, oh, it's just you again. I know you. You know, I could tear you up if I want to, but I'm not, you know, that kind of a thing. So they're they're really not that violent as far as eyewitness accounts go. But then we have these ones that are deadly. And you do hear about these uh, sometimes, but it's, it's the ones that are deadly and the ones that maul people to death are the ones that you hear the most about because it's almost like and I'm guilty of this, too, because I have a, a channel on youtube and i i bring the best in the in the cryptid world uh, on my shows and i tell you the the dog man shows where you're talking about people getting mauled to death those get the views and that's why people really really push those shows more and so you, it's out there in the public more but to be honest the majority of dog man encounters are not violent at all they're more like well you know it's interesting what that what's coming to mind there was a movie that came out years ago i think i was like a teenager it's called the lion in the darkness and it's about these two when they were building the railroad through africa it's based on a true story and actually a guy i was with for a while um who was from zimbabwe a white guy from zimbabwe his friend's grandmother the movie was based on her journals when this was happening and these lions were literally coming into these camps and like hunting the people and that's not typical of lions. Typically lions, you know, if you see a lion, it's because they're hungry or they're pissed off. Otherwise, they will leave you alone. They're not trying to, you know, as long as you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone, right? And so this phenomenon with a lot, with, I think it's called the lion in the darkness. I, I, I'll have to double check that, guys. Um, but it's literally, it was a crazy phenomenon because they had never had a case before where it appeared that an animal was literally hunting for pleasure. And that's what this reminds me of. Like there's particular dog men or women that literally seem to be doing this for pleasure, not for protection or not for, I don't know, maybe you can have more insight on that, but that just I, remind me of that story. Yeah. And I, I don't know, but I, for some reason, I feel like some of them could be organic or coming from an, another dimension. And then other ones are, have been created by humans. And for some reason, it feels like to me, the ones that are created by humans would be prone to be more, um, to, to be more vicious, almost because they're like pissed off that like, oh, and they've probably been kept in cages or like locked away somewhere. And they just have so much um, like tension within them. Yeah. Well, think about, well, let's look clockwork orange. Like think about the trauma they do to humans to make humans act out in certain ways. I mean, exactly. they could do that with animals too. I'm, I'm assuming, you know? So anyway, go ahead, Jessica. I just thought that was fascinating. Cause I, do again, I'd never heard of a dog. Cause I love dogs. I rescue dogs. Like dogs to me are just, Jessica's met my boy. She's met my little boy. They're just goofy and funny and they don't hurt. But you know, you think you hear these stories of dog, man. It's like, wow, that's so different from, like Fido, the little 
the little dogs that we have in our houses that have have come into our lives and, and and the thing too you know with dogs and horses dogs and horses have a very unique relationship with human beings you know human beings have relied on dogs and horses for our own survival throughout since the beginning of time and so we have the really deep connection to these two animals hum, human beings and, and dogs and horses so to hear a dog attack a dog man not a dog guys it, it's a different a different animal to all together but yeah it's just it's it's very interesting it's very and harrowing i can't I'm, you know what a way to go i i, I don't want to go a boring way but i definitely don't want to go that way <laughs> you know, so no well the the dog men are, are okay so just like the sasquatch and i i brought the 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 chart that had the four different types of sasquatch there's like six different types of dog men Okay, there are a lot. And so both of you guys, man, y'all are both picking up on what, what my data said about the dog man and, and the attack that happened. Um, there's elements of all this. We're going to get into that. I can't wait because you guys are going to be blown away. Um, but there's different types. So I'll, I'll give you the chart so you can show it on the show of the different types. And I don't remember what number it is, but one of the numbers, there is a hyena type dog man. Okay, a lot of the dog men do, people describe them as looking like a, a, a human body. Okay, like a torso and the hands look like raccoon hands. Okay, these things are like six, seven, sometimes eight feet tall. I mean, they're, they're gigantic, some of them. And, uh, but they have like raccoon like hands, which look like human hands, kind of. And, uh, and they have the, the digigrade legs. Okay, so the digigrade is what it looks like a dog's leg. Okay, so it's like the backwards knees almost. Okay, so they're like that. And they, they walk on two legs and they go down to four. So they're quadruped and bipedal as well um but they have a german shepherd type head that's how a lot of a lot of them are described on first-hand accounts i mean i've even heard people say that they saw one saw some that looked like they have pit bull heads okay which is weird right um but but german shepherd head is like kind of the main the main go-to and a lot of times they look like the um what is that movie there's um van helsing has like a werewolf or something and, it, and a lot of them look like that Okay, so, all right, so back, back to the mauling. All right, so what happened with this family is it was around the, I, I was told it was around 1982. Uh, a family of four, I believe they drove up from Florida and they went to the LBL for the weekend for a vacation. And uh, when they got there, I guess the dad and the son, okay, these are little children. These are small children. Uh, I don't I don't know the ages of them exactly, but the little boy, uh, he's, I'm going to say he was probably anywhere from seven to nine, maybe. I, I don't know for sure. But and then the daughter was younger. I think she was a little smaller. And they got there and the, the mom and the daughter were allegedly they were inside the camper doing something. And the dad and the son were outside the camper and the dad was kind of bent down doing something, fiddling around with something on the camper or on the ground. Maybe fixing a tire or something. I'm not sure what he was doing, but um, but something uh, apparently a a creature ran out of the woods. I believe there were two of them actually, but ran out of the woods and violently attacked the dad uh, immediately. And uh, at some point, with my with my remote viewing data, I picked I was picking up on a gunshot. Okay, so I do believe there was a gunshot that went off. Now, was it the dad? that shot i don't know or was it the son or was it the mom i don't know but there was a gunshot that happened in the environment because i picked up on that um so the dad was i believe his arm or arms were ripped off he was completely mauled um then it whatever this creature was it went after the son i think the son was trying to run for the camper to get inside and he didn't make it and he was mauled and then apparently the mother put up a hell of a fight trying to keep the door shut uh so that the beast would not get inside the camper and it was trying to get in and they said the camper was completely you know scratched from end to end and uh apparently the mom from from what i was told i think jody told me uh, from the north american dogman project that her fingers had been um her bones were sticking out of her fingertips from where she was uh trying so hard to keep that door shut and to fight she was trying to fight it off uh, and her daughter was apparently her daughter. She was trying to keep her, them from getting her daughter. And um, and so she died. And then the daughter was taken. Okay. And uh, and so there's different different 
different like stories okay because here we go with this story right like it's it's years and years later and um and, and people the the story's kind of out there um eyewitness reports are there you know the nadp the north american dogman project does a documentary on it and uh and then there's a guy that comes forward and says his name his name is roger i don't know roger at all okay and i i i wasn't there so i don't know for sure but he he claims that he was there when all this happened and uh and he he his claim is he was friends with the kids and uh and as everything as they started getting attacked he ran up underneath the camper and hid in the insides of the truck or the camper until the attack ceased is what he said but um i can tell you with my remote viewing data there were only four people there okay so there's it's really interesting how and, I, and i'm not saying he's lying okay but i'm just saying i i didn't detect any but i, I detected four individuals in that environment plus like two dog men or whatever those things were um so but anyways, it's just weird how, you know, people are kind of injected to kind of, and the story kind of changes a little bit, you know, here and there. And uh, and law enforcement completely denies all this, you know, of course. Uh, but so the story that I've been told was that I believe some hikers came along after all this went down. And somebody was walking by and they spotted the crime scene. We won't call it a crime scene. Um, the carnage. And they went and called for help. Could okay, and then the police came. Could you imagine stumbling? You're out for a nice day in a national park, and that's what you stumble. I, I got. And before we, I'm gonna put this down in the description box below, guys. But I'm gonna link um, this website down below for our viewers who are really interested and want to. Um, gosh, look at that! Look at that! Jesus! Oh yeah. Jesus, I, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll link, I'll link so, this website below guys. Yeah. They've got some great pictures. It's a great resource there um, for dog man information. <clears throat> okay. So, so the, so this, the story goes that the police showed up, the law enforcement, like the federal cops came in and everything and uh, state police. And they were looking at the scene, trying to figure out what happened. And apparently there was no, there was only three people there. And so they didn't know that there was a third person or fourth person, uh, the other, the little girl. And so, uh, but as they were inspecting, they saw that there was little girl clothes there in the camper. And so they said, well, there's, we're missing one. Okay. So uh, as the story goes, two of the officers went walking through the woods looking uh, for any kind of sign of this little girl. Um, and lo and behold, they one of them, uh, they were standing underneath the tree and blood was dripping, started dripping on their heads. And they looked up and the little girl was up in a tree. Okay. And, um, and she was deceased and apparently eaten upon. Okay. So, uh, but that's the story. It is very gruesome. It's very gruesome. Um, it's really sad. It's really sad. Now, uh, if you go by what this other gentleman says now, and he's, he's living to this day and, uh, and I, I've never met him. But he claims that he was hiding underneath that truck. His version of the story is that after the dog, the dog man, he said the dog man left. Um, he got out from underneath the truck and he ran for help is what he says. And he was picked up by like a farmer or somebody in a truck. And, um, and so all this all this stuff happened. His, his story is interesting. So, I mean, if you want to go and find him, he, you can find his story on YouTube uh, and, and listen to his version as well. But. Okay, so with my with my remote viewing data, this is where it gets really juicy. Okay, I'm excited for this. I know okay. we want the gossip, girl. We want the gossip. We got I got the tea on the ground between the lips. <laughs> and, okay, it. Well, I, I want I want to also touch on uh, the fact that there have been people like there's a, a pretty well known bow hunter incident. Like this this happened not too long ago, where a bow hunter went missing, and um and is expected is suspected that he was taken by a dog man as well okay and uh and a lot of these cases i've, I've been assigned i've been a task several alleged or um supposed or suspected dog man attacks but a lot of times when i'm remote viewing these cases i don't know what they are and i'm, I'm watching a cat attack a person so there a lot of times it's big cats okay and they get mistaken for dog man attacks but um but on this one in particular this was no cat 
Okay. And, uh, and you got to wonder, like, why was there such a cover up? Why, why is there no record of this? Well, there's one, why, thing why are there? There's two mm -hmm. things that might, and I don't know what you're going to say, but it's uh, weird. There's two, two things here. One, when I covered the son of Sam murders in um, the cult in Untermeyer Park, which I will link those videos below, we learned that they sacrificed German shepherds. Mm -hmm. And then I learned that German shepherds are huge in deity worship. And so there's a, there's a, there's a lot of mysticism around German shepherds Two. It's funny, my boyfriend and I were just talking about this the other day in relationship to the Southeast being Egypt. When So we're in third density, and third density is allegedly the only density that has like an astro or a quantum realm because we, fourth, fifth, sixth density don't have a veil, right? So they don't have like the quantum, like we're the only ones that have that veil. And for entities from a different density, when they come through and they have to materialize here on our density, it takes a lot of energy. So there's two things that give them that particular energy. This particular kind of gold, which is only found in the southeastern United States, which was is what which was what Egypt was famous for, which is another clue that this was actually Egypt. There's a particular kind of gold that they eat, or humans. Eating humans gives them the ability to appear. So Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Well, you're gonna you're gonna love this because go this for is it, girl. Crazy. Go for it. This, so this is this is wild. So I did I did two separate uh, targets for this, and they were uh, you know m a month or two apart. And uh, with the first the first target that I had, I was tasked with the exact target was describe. This was to describe the beast of the LBL. Describe the actual beast, not the attack yet. This is just the beast. Okay. And so I immediately with my analytic overlay data. Okay. And I don't want to get into like a whole lesson on how I do remote viewing and stuff, but I, I'm going to tell you some of my, some of my data, let's just go there. Um, okay. I, I, with my sensory data, I would definitely was picking on something that was dark and hairy. Okay. So I, that was, that was definitely in the data, but with my Sounds analytic like overlay, guys I've dated. Sounds like some guys. Dark and dated, hairy. So. <laughs> I really like them dark and hairy. That's right. Okay. But, uh, but I was picking up, I actually wrote down the word werewolf in my data. So I was seeing, um, I wrote down werewolf creature, teeth, cult, okay, occult, uh, or cult, C-U-L-T, uh, spells, okay, so I'm I'm not only, whatever this is, okay, I, I'm going to keep going with the data, but I just want to kind of set the stage for the audience, like, what, what I was picking up on was not just, like, a natural beast, the one, the one, it's something, this, there could be something being conjured there. Now, this is going to get real dicey because I might know people that live around that area. Okay, too. And we got Derek here, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, and there's a lot of occult stuff going on over there, apparently, that I didn't know about. Yeah. That I found out since. Okay. We can talk to you. Yeah, Derek, you can tell us about some of that. But I was picking up on this. Okay. So, spells. Um, I was picking up on... Uh, there's a whole lot of other stuff. It's like I was picking up on like the folklore of the area and things that were like mythology, things that, you know, whatever's going on in this area, it's, 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 it runs deep. Okay. A lot of mythology. And I wrote down the word truther. And then I wrote down attack beast and hair. I was picking up on like a lot of hair and stuff, but in a, a, a beast that was attacking, uh, I was picking up on something. I was picking up on barking in house. Okay, barking and howls, and and I and I was feeling personally, I was I was feeling like this really dreaded, scared feeling. Okay, in my body, um, I was something that was uh, it was unbelievable in the shadows, in the moonlight, uh, bitter, prolonged. And then I wrote down German Shepherd. I wrote down Freya because that's my dog's name. And then I wrote down because I have a German Shepherd, and so I was seeing what looked like my dog. Okay, so I wrote down German Shepherd, and then I wrote down. Willing participants cover up sneaky and dark hour. Okay. Oh, wait, there's more. I have a bunch of data on this one. Okay. I was also picking up on something that was stealthy, fast, hiding, and sneaky. And then I wrote down spying and disappear. And it was, it, it, I kept picking up on data that was about it being in the shadows, something that hides in the shadows. Okay. I also started picking up on trespassing. It does not, whatever this is, 
hates trespassers. That was like a huge part of the data. If you cross a line, it will eat you or something. Whatever this is, it will hurt you. Okay, so um, I was picking up on something again that was um, hairy and muscular. Okay, uh, wet, sweaty, panting, hairy. So when I hear panting, I'm thinking of a dog or some kind of an animal. Okay, um, but in my analytic overlay, I wrote down dominant alpha, portal, interdimensional, gateway, obliterate. Okay, obliterate many. So there's not just one. I wrote down many. And I, and I kept getting more trespassing data, okay, like people that are trespassing. Um, I also wrote down toxic, lone wolf, a killer, a baby face killer. That's what I wrote down. Uh, and then, I, of course, I was hearing a Wu-Tang song after that. So I, did, I had to write that down in the data, unfortunately. But, yeah, it's there. Uh, but then I, I wrote down, okay, so I was picking up on a lone wolf, but I was also picking up on a dog pack. Okay, so it's almost like there's the beast... Of whatever this is, I didn't know this was the Beast Bill Bill, okay, when I was remote viewing it, but it's it, there's a lone wolf that's an alpha. It's probably doing a lot of the attacking, but then they've got a pack as well, okay? And I, I picked up on a plethora of attacks. They're hidden. There's a government watch. They spy, and there's a network, okay? So that's that was my first target was, okay, first of all, we got a beast, whatever this is, it is a killer it will go after people if they trespass uh, and they are watched by the government very clearly in the data. They're watched by the government and there's a, a I wrote down spy network. OK, so I think that they're they're all monitored, uh, whatever, whatever is going on here at the land between the lakes. Um, so that was my first target. What do you all think about that? I might be totally off and this might be my imagination getting the best of me. But when you said trespass, like Derek and I talked about this, the way that they created land between the lakes, which was land between the rivers. And there was all this hoopla around its creation. We know with like Lake Lanier here in Georgia, we've talked a lot about these drowned out areas that are hiding something. Um, when you said trespassing, like if someone crosses a line and obviously <laughs> this line doesn't probably isn't like marked, you know, so you don't really know you've done it. It just in the government's involvement, it makes me think that there is an area on the peninsula that's really potent, maybe a portal, maybe something that's really freaking potent. And so the powers that be or the powers that were, however you want to say that, have conjured, because we know they do black magic, they have conjured a beast to patrol the area and of this of this particular location on the peninsula. And they, you know, I think they're probably pretty happy with the folklore. They're going to tell you it's not real and it's all folklore, but enough folklore is out there to keep people a little bit afraid of the area. Yeah. Does that make sense? Was that logical? Yeah. I think that's very logical from my personal ex experiences and how I've seen it. And also in the last video that we did, I told you about, I was, um, I was right by the Kentucky Dam and which is Grand Rivers and I was like doing some sunshine work, making the, the the sunshine brighter. And then here comes a military helicopter with, with a huge missile on it. And then a black smog covers the, the sunshine. Okay. And I didn't say this part in it, but I'm going to say it here because um, so I, I started getting pissed. It pissed me off because I was trying to make the sun beautiful. And then like they throw some black smog over it. Well, for one, for someone to have the ability to, I, I don't know what it was or how it came about, but it seemed something very um, supernatural and witchy, you know? Bill Gates. Uh, Doesn't Bill Gates want to block the sun? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. Little okay. dweeb, that little dweeb. So so I, I turn around and I'm like walking back to my car and there's this a truck driving like that passes me. And I had like a weird feeling about it. So I just like kind of like, like shot some energy like out of my head and just kind of like F y'all. Um, and as soon as I did that, they, they slammed on their brakes, which made me real. And then, then they waited for me to walk past. So th these are like some, I feel like high level black magicians who have the ability to channel energy and literally cause black smog to appear. And they, they were so in tune that they felt me shoot energy at them to where they like stopped and were like, well, what do you want? You know, most people don't realize whenever you get shot with energy in the first place, you know, so I do. And I think that I'm pretty sure that they are using 
the the energy of the dams to do a lot of this black magic and then you have fort campbell which i i feel like there's most likely an underground tunnel system that would go it would make sense for it to go from fort campbell to lbl oh god there's all sorts of underground bases and stuff there for sure there's no doubt at wow. all um and uh and as a matter of fact you guys also in tennessee have, well this is in tennessee this is not kentucky but in tennessee there's not too far from there uh they have which is on kind of the other side of tennessee but they have there's like a rumors and i believe it's true because i've been told personally there's a large hadron collider in tennessee where they turn out they worked on the manhattan project there and yeah. uh and they're they're cranking that we don't know how often they're cranking that thing up i mean it's, they work with cern in switzerland on a project called alice a-l-i-c-e just like down the rabbit hole like alice down the rabbit hole so look that up because we have a lot of cryptid sightings in east tennessee all over tennessee i've done plenty of investigating in tennessee in the caves and everything underground bases caves bigfoot sightings dogman whatever it's all out there unspecified animal attacks okay people don't know what the animals are that are attacking and mauling people um but yeah what what exactly is going on okay well, i forgot to tell you this i don't uh, maybe i forgot to tell you this jessica but uh derek i don't remember when we did the bell witch oh. yeah derek's the five times great grandson of john bell Oh, I'm fully aware of that. I know. Okay. We all, I'm gonna, I want to take a trip, man. We need to all I know. Go. We're going to take a trip. Well, and Adams, yeah. Tennessee is close. It's pretty close. Like an hour. Yeah. Like an hour. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. An hour. And I will oh, say, I, I covered this a while ago on my channel, the Norris Dam. So the Norris Dam is near Knoxville, which is where my grandfather, my dad's dad is from. And there is believed to be an ISIS temple under the Norris Dam. That that's what they were drowning out. And that's when I learned that Tennessee literally translates to the country of isis because isis was spelled esse like the essenes in the bible those because we know that the real yashua was actually egyptian they were the they, they were they were the group they were the isis cult they were the isis the priests and priests of isis uh, you've got isis on right now on. i uh, wear isis every day i do yeah. yes i have a connection it's really yeah. that's really cool mm -hmm. we're, we're freaking egyptians it's us guys we're the totally. egyptians <laughs> um incarnated you know, and I, I had that speculation with Atlanta itself because this was originally called Elizabethstown. Why did they change this to the name Atlanta? We know we have Ponce de Leon Market, which apparently under allegedly underneath Ponce de Leon, the Ponce Market City Market is um, the Fountain of Youth. Like there's all these mystical attributes to the city of Atlanta. Um, I went back and rewatched uh, a couple years ago the openings to the 1996 Olympics, which I remember seeing them as a kid, but I went back and rewatched them with fresh eyes. I was horrified at the opening. It was conjuring something. You know, there was something they were doing in the 1996 Olympics that wasn't good. You know, the cloggers were great. The cloggers were great, but <laughs> the cloggers. I love some clogging. The cloggers were great. So, I do think, too, that. Like with the Manhattan Project, MK Ultra, I think a lot of that happened up and down the Tennessee River, um, because I I went through a phase of thinking that I was part of it as a child. <laughs> I probably wasn't, but for some reason, that like I literally will like my mind will like make me think that something is real whenever it's not, and I used to struggle with knowing, okay, Derek, is that real or is that not real? Now now I can tell, but before when that would happen, I would get in full blown like episodes of like thinking stuff is going down, like people are chasing me, the government's like like tapping my mind and all this stuff. So for some reason I do feel like a lot of that also took place on this side of the Tennessee River. Because the Tennessee River, it comes from Knoxville from the east side all the way over and eventually goes into the Mississippi. So Derek, it could be I wouldn't be shocked if they were. If you're an ancestor of John Bell, which is like again the yeah. most par the most famous paranormal, and I, and I will say just from the law of one, like you know, I, we talk about this a lot on my channel specifically. Like I have a lot in my history on both sides of my family. I have a lot of like Freemasons. I my great great grandfather through my dad's mom's side was like a wonderful wizardly. War I don't even know like the crazy title St old Stanley had, and he was also an attorney. Um, but my boyfriend and I've talked about this a lot. When your when your soul is picking a body, like when you when you decide to incarnate into this world, um, there is you know the the body is the shakti. It's the creation of the soul for this temporary experience. So the karma and karma just means cause and effect. So 
when your soul is looking to do something in this world, it's going to look for DNA that can help it do what it needs to do, right? Like whatever mission it is that it's on. And just because there were ancestors that maybe were, were conjuring spirituality on the negative side doesn't mean that you can't use it for the positive. It's already been opened, right? It's already right. been opened. And so, but I do think, I hope I explained explain that okay. I hope that makes sense. But I do think that those of us who do have interesting ancestors are somewhat watched. I do, I think that, I don't know if it's crazy watched, but I do think that they're, um, and it might not even be by third density people. It could, it's this, this you know, the, the law of one talks about the wanderers, the souls that are wanderers, meaning they volunteer to come down from fifth or sixth density. And once they volunteer, we they go through a, a, a veil of amnesia, but the darkness can see them. And so people who are wanderers tend to have a lot of shit happen to them. A yeah. lot of bad things happen to them. And a lot of spiritual attacks happen to them. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't discredit, long story short, even though maybe you weren't in the mention, I wouldn't discredit the paranoia, if that makes right. sense. Right. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. You said that very well. And I agree. I, I don't fully dismiss it, but I just, I guess I don't, um, I don't voice it as much now because people. We in the bobble belt, honey. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. We in the bobble belt. <laughs> but now I'm just like, like literally like if I go to like to a therapist or something, I, I never can tell the full truth. Cause I'm like, they're going to, I know what they're going to diagnose me. They're like, you're, you're a psycho. You're psychotic. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I don't even tell like even like psychiatrists or the doctors like the real story of what I'm really thinking. I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I'm actually friends with uh, several people who were victims of the Montauk Project uh, really? and were in their programs. Yeah, they're good friends of mine. How, how and, did they uh, know that they were? Like, how did they? Well, some, some of them just started getting their memories back. You know, uh, some of the guys in the secret space program, you know, it's just like flashes of memories and things like that. And um, yeah, and just being able to meet up with other people were, that were in the programs and stuff too uh, helps, you know, bring some of their memories back. Gotcha. I will say, I will tell like a quick thing that happened to me when I was first on YouTube, just if it makes you feel better. Um, I laugh about how I've always been terrified of Antarctica. Like even before all of the stuff came out, like when I was a little kid, I was always terrified of it. Mostly because I was terrified of the world being round and Antarctica being on the bottom and you're walking upside down. Like I've flown to the Southern hemisphere a few times and I've had to take like an actual Ambien to <laughs> knock myself out. Cause it freaks me out so much. Right. We won't get into flat earth round off. We, we won't get into that, but I, I made a joke about it on a show and I got this crazy email and this person emailed me for a while and she, I think it was a she. She kept saying, the reason why you're terrified of Antarctica is because you were there with me when we were kids. Now, with that being said, I know with some whistleblowers that I that I do know, they know that, that time can be paused. They can pause time so that you don't have a memory of it or things can't... Like like the, the Malaysia flight that went missing um, back in 2014, you know, according to the Cassiopeians, that Malaysia flight is stuck in stasis right now it accidentally flew into like a little portal. So those people on the flight, from what I understand from the Cassiopeia, it's literally 2000. They've literally only been up there for like five minutes, according to them. Uh -huh. And now the Cassiopeians are saying that the good powers that be can't land the plane because first of all, how are they going to explain that to the rest of the population when these people walk off the plane and it's been 10 years and they haven't aged at all? How uh -huh. and you know, the bad powers that be are going to want to take them out because of that. They don't want them talking. So they're just holding the plane in stasis right now. That's wild. And the people are, so if you think about that in your own life, like could there have been a time where you thought only five minutes passed, but there was a time manipulation. So, and that just opens up an, of an even bigger, and I'm not saying I was in Antarctica. Yeah, that could have just been a crazy person emailing me, but it was very interesting, you know, where she was like, I know why you're terrified of Antarctica. Um, so I, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's wild though. We have people from the sea. I know you talk a lot, Jessica, to the secret space program guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I do. I have them on my show pretty often, too. We talk about all their experiences from going to the 20 and backs with Tony Rodriguez and Daryl James. Uh, Daryl's Daryl's been in some of the underground facilities and seen some of the human animal chimeras. And it comes on my show and has talked to me about them. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really it's really wild what all's out there and, and the things that people experience. And yeah, and there's a 
it is a it, it is a thing like people don't want to talk about it just like Derek because it's people we get chastised you know listen I'm a Bigfoot experiencer okay so I'm out here talking about Bigfoot and aliens in my bedroom and like all this weird stuff and I just I, I quit caring what people think uh, first yeah. of all because because there's more there's there's more of us out here you know a lot of us are experiencing this and if I can share my story if we can all share our stories it makes it easier for all of us and for other people you know it normalizes it so you're not so afraid of it it's like right. we were on the show with aquarius uh rising Af africa the other day dusk when i was moderating i was saying that i think i texted you this there was a TikTok where somebody was saying at one point the crypt uh, kangaroo was considered a cryptid because people are exploring australia and they were coming back talking about this animal with this pouch and how it stands on its back leg and it was classified as a cryptid people thought they were crazy like oh you just imagine it until they massively started settling australia and they're like oh look at that <laughs> there it is. and it makes you wonder like with all of the videos all of the sightings all of the evidence of sasquatch and bigfoot and even dogman too it's like why are they still considered to be cryptids why is there such a, a you know a, a cover-up going on uh where i mean I've, I've actually seen topographical maps from the u.s air force uh, that show sasquatch as a dangerous animal in the united states Okay, but why is that not known to the public? Why are they still cryptids? Yeah, you know? why do they? Yeah, why, why do they? Why does it matter if they are real or not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why do they want to hide it? Why? Like, why do you think? Well, I think that they're they're working with the government. Uh, there, I've had people on my shows that talk about the cryptid breeding programs that are going on now, whether they're real or not. I I mean, I've remote viewed it, and I do believe they are real. <laughs> okay, but uh, but some. Some people, a lot of people in the field say that uh, they've seen dogmen wearing military uniforms, okay, walking around with guns and stuff, you know, uh, just part of the military. They say that they've, they're used overseas. Like some people say there were werewolves used during uh, the World War II and during the Vietnam War. They sent werewolves down into the, to the tunnels uh, when oh, they were in Vietnam. Well, and it's, uh, I'm thinking like I've done a lot of drugs in my day. Like I've had fun. If I saw a freaking dog man dress up in the military, I'd probably be like, wait a minute. <laughs> what did I do? This I would think it was me. I'd be like, is that, is that my twenties coming back? To are you really, are you really there? <laughs> I'd like, I'd touch and be like, are you really there? It could be just a matter of time before they do start introducing them to the public a little more. I mean, who knows? I mean, all they have to do is just parade them out on stage and like half the, half the population ain't going to believe it anyways. The yeah. other half is going to be like, okay, well now we have disclosure. Now we know, you know, that's all we got to do. Just like show us. The United States announced that there were actual aliens aliens and nobody cared <laughs> nobody cared exactly okay well, well like this <laughs> well, back to the to the beast of the lbl with that when the family uh, got attacked uh, i don't want to get into all the data because it's a whole lot of data but i can tell you that a lot of the data from the remote viewing session did deal with let's see uh it was dealing with beat the whatever these beasts are that attacked the family they were let out to feed okay let out to feed and they're scavengers and they are trained assassins trained okay they're strong but not men uh, i did i did actually see what i was seeing was it looked like an, a man but it wasn't a man okay it looked like an animal that was like a werewolf man okay but bryce you're gonna you're gonna die when i tell you this they were they were going for the the a word the high adrenalized blood Oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and put this on Rumble anyway, because my channel gets, we're talking up, so, so it's okay. You can say adrenochrome. Adrenochrome. I want to know, I wanna know mm -hmm. what blood type this family was, too. I don't know. Yeah. Do you know what their race was? Well, they, I, I was, I was told that they are, uh, what is that? What are they called? Oh my God. Hold on. Quakers or something. I can't they're, remember. They're, if that's are they the word. white? They're white. white yes. Blood. I believe they were. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, when I got deep into studying blood types too, I learned Amish. Amish. They were Amish. Oh God, Stop. Amish. That's that's what I was told after the research and everything. I, I was told that's they were Amish. Pure meat, because they got they've been canon before the rest of us started canon. Like they eat the pure food. Yeah. They right. have their shit together. There's a lot of Amish yes. around here, and they got their shit together, honey. Yeah, if the <laughs> apocalypse comes, I'm, I'm running to them. But the, yeah, it won't it won't face their lifestyle. I'll put a prayer dress on to save you. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Well, it's, it, you know, and that's the thing too. I always laugh. There's this great stuff going around for, uh, you know, I consider I'm a zennial. I'm like in between um, the generation X or an elder millennial is born in 83, but th- there's this funny thing that's going around this phenomenon that millennials, cause you're a millennial, right, Derek? Yeah. Millennials are not aging like generations before them. And actually generation Z is aging faster than millennials. And so there's this really, these funny TikToks going around where all these millennials who are like in their late thirties, early forties are coming up on 40, like, like I'm 41 are sitting there saying, I think it's because when we were kids, we were fed a lot of processed food. So we're just processed. Like we're just like fake. Like, and maybe, you know, maybe the more junk food you eat, the less, less likely they are to want to feed off of you. Um, so, so yay for Snickers bars and beers, but uh, you know, when I studied, but, but in all seriousness, when I was studying like races and blood types and what this group uses when they traffic humans, so adrenalized blood, allegedly, from what I studied, the the type of human that gives the best, the most potent adrenalized blood are blonde-haired, blue-eyed little boys. They give the best adrenalized blood up there. Whenever I was a kid, I had, like, white, blonde hair. Yeah. Blue. So. There's something about the, and we know that the RH negative is generally, is that's the higher rate of, I mean, I'm RH negative, it's a higher rate is, but like for black children, um, th- when they're trafficked, they have stronger organs. They have the strongest organs. So they are typically trafficked for organ harvesting. I don't know which one's worst. It's all horrific. Um, yeah. So they, there's different, and I find that fat, that's why I asked what their race was, because I find that interesting that they were out for a fee. They wanted a, a adrenochrome. And if there were other people out on the property at that time, did they pick this family because they were looking for a particular potency in the, in the adrenalized blood? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I've, I've, I've never thought of that aspect of it. Um, I mean, okay, well, there, there's other stories of, and, and there's a documentary that the, um, it may be on the North American Dogman website, the, their project, the one that you showed earlier. Uh, it, it may be there, but they did put out a documentary about, this attack and uh and they had an eyewitness on there giving a deathbed confession uh he was with the fishing game of tennessee the tennessee fishing game warden i think and he said that he had been restocking fish from what i can recall in one of the lakes so he was out there fishing and he was on his boat and he was going down the river and he looked over and he saw what looked like it was like a gigantic like a werewolf or something but it was crouched down by the by the river and there was a couple setting up their tent okay and the couple and and this thing was crouched down like it was about to attack and the guy started screaming to the couple to try to warn them like get out of there like i don't know what this thing is and he was waving his arms telling them to get out of there and whatever this creature was pounced on him and mauled both of them to death right in front of him and uh and in the documentary he says that i believe he passed out because it was so shocking he he passed out and he woke up he was down the river um and he was like oh god I, I'm, I'm assuming he thought it was just a bad dream but he was he was terrified and uh and he said that stuck with him his entire life so, and he and he was actually dying of cancer and uh and video did like a, a video of of confession right before he died as to what he saw wow there was another story that's famous with this that i when i was doing some brief research for the beast where there was a police officer who went yeah, uh, hunting back probably the nineties with his friend and they had an experience and he didn't, he didn't tell his story for a long time. So he thought people would think he was crazy. But from what I understand, I think he believed that other animals there were trying to save them and got them out. Now that's a good question, Jessica. Did, does dog man ever attack other animals or is it just human beings? Oh, I'm sure they do. I mean, I don't, I don't, well, yeah, they, they absolutely kill livestock and small animals, domesticated animals. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of times how you'll, you'll start noticing that there's, there is activity in your area because all the livestock start getting mauled, their blood gets drained, um, they, their dogs start disappearing, chickens. Uh, there's a case, um, I think it was in Ohio, if I'm not mistaken, of there was, it was a, a place, it was like a dog kennel, like a boarding place for German shepherds. And uh, something came in and, and I have a German shepherd. They can be mean and they're, they're not to be messed with, but they were all mauled to death inside their kennels. Uh, there was at least five of them, if I can recall. 
but they said that it was a, the work of a dog man had gone in there because a lot, well, it could have been a Sasquatch too, you know, Sasquatch and dog man, Sasquatch, they're not real, they're not real kind to barking dogs. Right. Okay? They don't like barking dogs. So it could have been them, but I, I was told it was a dog man had That's done that. So sad. That's well, German separates typically are police dogs too. When mm -hmm. police dogs get trained, they're typically German yeah. separates. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, my boyfriend was, his dad was in the Coast Guard, um, which I did, Derek, I did ask him because there is, are Coast Guard locations at LBL. And Todd was just like, that's weird. <laughs> that was all I kind of said. <laughs> but um, it felt weird to me. It was weird. Oh, uh, because usually Coast Guard. Coast Guard, like they're like, he, I mean, when my boyfriend was a kid, he lived bunches of places, but it was all on the coast. It was all coastal places that he lived with it when his dad got transferred. But he was telling me stories about with dogs, with his dad, like how they like he my boyfriend knows a lot about do dog jaws because certain dogs cannot be law enforcement because the way their jaw is. So if they bite down like a pit bull or, you know, a Rottweiler. If they bite down in a particular way, they can't release like a German. Sh so they pick particular uh, breeds of dogs for particular work, even in the and there's a great TikTok floating around where they show how dogs, police dogs get retired. It's so sweet. They over, they go, they retire them at eight. They go over the intercom and they're like, Fido Rogers, thank you for your service. You're now free to retire. It's just so cute when the dog gets retired. But, um, but, uh, which means they get to go live a good life, guys. It doesn't mean they're going out to the farm. They get to go live a retired life and just be a dog. But, um, you know, so if, if you're thinking about like our police forces are picking and our military, because his dad would have to do stuff with dogs to train them for military military reasons so if they're doing that with dogs and they're able to pick particular breeds of dogs for particular reasons then obviously the dark side is doing this as well with cryptids mm -hmm. for particular reasons oh yeah we talk about um conjuring cryptids on my channel quite a bit i've done shows on it uh anywhere where there's you know bloodshed especially if there's been land disputes and wars like civil war battles we know they're all that's happened all over the south yeah. um there's a lot of cryptid activity LBL. lbl was one big land dispute when the government came in and took the people off by gunpoint that lived there mm -hmm. already yeah and also in jover uh, which is the Tennessee side, the south entrance, you you enter through the city of Dover, and that's where <clears throat> Fort Donaldson is. It was like a major civil, or maybe, yeah, I think the Civil War, like a major battlefield is there, and like the graveyards and everything are still there. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you for mentioning that, Derek. When my research on LBL, because the peninsula was like towns before the government came in and said, be a real good idea if you guys left so we can have this and they you know there was a lot of battles that had like they there was gun there's guns fired at that point and they were a lot of the people were brought off the land by gunpoint by the government but what what happened was is that the government kind of left some of the um general stores like you can still find ruins of some of the old they never cared to clean it up but another feature that lbl has a lot of is cemeteries cemeteries well, yeah and I have a belief, and this just is my opinion, guys, because I've studied, the, I've done a huge deep dive into like catacombs, that kind of stuff. Now, all my time in India, in India, their belief system around death is that you get cremated. And that is, you always get cremated because that's making sure, like they actually even take the body and the oldest son of the family will like step on the skull to make sure the Ajna, the third eye, this area is shattered, which to me is horrifying. But if you're used to that, and you know why, I guess it's not that bad to hear it, to get the pop, to make sure that the, the spirit can fully get out. Then they oh. cremate the body. So they make sure that the spirit is totally free. There's no remnants left over of the spirit so it can move on, which I think is really beautiful. Like in the Western world, and I want to be cremated because of it. In the Western world, we used to do that too. Like our ancestors, if we're if we're looking at the official timeline, the official history, which I know that's questionable, but all three of us are of European descent. So all if we're looking at what they tell us is true about our ancestors, before the church came in, the Catholic Church came in and colonized, because so, so the church colonized Europe first. So before that, you had the Druids, you had the Celtics, you had what we consider pagan, like our, our deep, deep ancestors were doing what they consider pagan faiths, which is more natural based faiths. And they were cremating bodies too. They also cremated. The church came in and said you had to be buried on consecrated land. So this is why we have all these catacombs because all of a sudden you got all these damn bodies 
and not enough land. So they put them down in tunnels. Now, my belief system is because if you go to a lot of graveyards, you see a lot of obelisk. Now, obelisk are not inherently bad. Like a lot of people, people that they are, obelisk are just energy antennas. That's all they are. They're energy antennas. Well, you see a lot of them in graveyards. Why? What are they doing with the remains of all these people, these bodies who have been put in one place, to piled on top of each other in one place mm -hmm. with an obelisk? I've always wondered that because it's very Egyptian. Very Egyptian because it's it's it represents, you know, some people think that it thinks it's Osiris's wiener. I don't think it's Osiris's <laughs> wiener, although <laughs> what a scary wiener if that's that if it's that well to me it kind of makes sense that it would be they say a phallus. Like to me that makes sense because if you imagine like what comes out of life. Uh, I mean penis is life, the spark of life. Yeah. Well, there's so also it's like the tip of it. <laughs> well, that's a pointy tip. Listen, if you got that <laughs> tip, I won't be like See you next life, buddy. Um, the also in, in the Eastern, now the Egyptians called it the Jed. Um, and Sanskrit is called Shashumna. And I'm more familiar with the Sanskrit. And I, I keep pointing to my spine because it's basically the human spine. And this, but it's not the spine. It's just like this like tube of energy that runs up the human spine. All right. And so it's this nadi. We call it a nadi. We have 75,000 nadis in our body. But Shashumna is like the main Mac Daddy. And this is where Kundalini energy lives or Christ consciousness energy. It lives at the pelvic floor and comes up through the chakras, through the, through the top of the head, the spine. It's an energy antenna. And so I always took from my research the obelisk to be a, an external representation of like we see like antennas for TVs, like they're collecting energy. It's, it's a firing off of energy. And so... I don't know. It's just very suspicious to me that they've got all this, like what, 270 like cemeteries or something like that are on LBL. It's crazy. Yeah, a bunch. They didn't even I have a book of, of where they're all located that I found at a flea market. Listen, <laughs> if we ever want to go grave, grave we're looking. We're going to go visit and all three of us are going to be little witches running around throwing sage on all <laughs> the graveyards being like be free a, my child be free my child <laughs> i have a question for jessica in your data is there anything regarding like aliens or extraterrestrials no i didn't i didn't come up with any uh data that has anything to do with ets but i did get the interdimensional and the the portal there so portal. there is some sort of a portal now uh, most of my data was was pointing towards this being some sort of underground operation that's going on where these wow. things, whatever these things are in the data, it says that they escaped. Okay. So they were actually locked up in something that was underground there. Uh, I believe there's some sort of facility there where that these things true. were being kept and people do report hearing what sounds like a dumpster, like a metal dumpster being slammed down on the ground there sometimes. And, uh, and I don't know if that is, an underground bunker, a door, like opening and closing and letting these things in and out. I mean, who knows? There's no telling, well, but I did get they were get being let out to feed. I And I was kind of thinking beforehand that maybe the reason that there's so this one in, on LBL is so angry. I was thinking it probably was being locked up and it escaped and it's just going, going ham on everything, you know? Yeah. Um, it's yeah, yeah, they're, and, they're, they're they're trained assassins. I mean, that the, in the data it says assassin trained assassin on the loose, but they were being led out to feed. Okay, so and and I have sent since all this has happened. It's been a, a couple of years. I have been told by people who claim to know stuff about these programs with the dogmen uh, that I'm not going to say our government's working on, but some sort of agency particular potentially is. Oh, it's our government. We know that. <laughs> I mean, it could be our government. Um, but they do, they, they are trained assassins and they have, they do use them to go in and take people out sometimes and, uh, and they're chipped and they're collared and they're tracked. Uh, there's a, a YouTube channel. I can't remember the name of it. There's a YouTube channel where a guy brings on a gentleman and he claims to be part of the dog man or cryptid breeding programs. And, uh, I can't, God, I can't remember their names, but anyways, uh, he claims that he's been a part of the program and they, they do, um, they breed werewolves, they breed Sasquatch, and they breed dogmen, and they work with them, and they have trainers, and they have handlers, and uh, and they 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 can do security detail for people, for the elite, yeah. and stuff like that. I, I, know, I know two places on, on LBL where I found, it's like an entrance going into, like, the hill, but they, they concreted over it to where you can't get in there anymore, but it's like, with 
looks like obvious places where you're entering the earth, you know, into yeah. some tunnel system. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, there's there's places like this. It's all federal land, right? So um, a lot of times when you when you line up that map of like the missing persons clusters, and then you put like the Bigfoot sighting map on top of that, and then like the UFO sightings and the underground, uh, deep underground military base map and the caverns and caves map. I mean, they all they all are the same map. They're the same. They correlate all of them. So. I have a theory because, you know, we talk about this with like feral people as well that live like in these national parks. And, you know, we talk a lot about the government, the powers that be um, declaring war on its own people, which is treason, but they don't care. Um, and a lot of people are more afraid of like the UN coming in, which is a valid excuse. But I think about these like feral people and these cryptids that are you know, what if, you know, the giants that, you know, we have all these Indian burials here in the Southeast. And when I, that was the first strike I got on YouTube was when I covered the giants because all these Indian burials that we were taught as kids in the Southeast are just a bunch of bodies buried together. Well, it turns out, no, it's just like one big body. It's, and they're not dead. They're, they're also in stasis, just like the airplane. And could you imagine there's one right outside of um, Etowah Mounds, right outside of, of Atlanta. Could you imagine like all of a sudden you see a giant fee fi fo fum running down I-75? Like how yeah. terrifying would that be? You know, like I feel like half the time when I'm talking to my spirits, spirit guys, I'm like, oh, y'all not gonna believe this shit. Like, oh, I don't believe what we got going on out here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, dog dog men are associated with Indian burial mounds too, and they're sighted uh -oh. around Indian burial mounds. And we, uh, speaking of the Etowah Indian mounds, about ten miles down the road from the Etowah Indian mound or mounds, is there's plural. Uh, is the, nor well, I'm not going to say the county because it's where I, I'm, I'm from, where I live, uh, but there's uh, the north part of that county, there's a very well-known werewolf that's been cited. They, they call it the that county name werewolf. And, uh, and I talked about it at the Georgia Bigfoot Conference, actually, I mentioned it. Uh, but, you know, I have family and I have a lot of people who work with the sheriff's department out there. And, uh, and they've been getting calls about this werewolf for almost 20 years. Uh, being spotted on the side of the road and it's on this particular road my cousin lives on this road and uh, and there is a little um government owned park in the area too by the way with a waterfall that's all i'm going to say about that uh but yeah it, it's it's a hundred percent feasible too because these cryptids like they're fast uh they cover a lot of ground within a day they're large so yeah i mean 10 miles is nothing for a, a werewolf or a dogman to go back and forth to that mount there's native burial grounds there too mm -hmm. yes yeah. and we see a lot of the, especially the cherokee they warned there's every time i cover something the cherokees were like listen you guys like let's tell let me tell you what's up and they would warn and we're like it's fine it's fine <laughs> it'll be fine um well it's like and i learned too that there's certain genetic bloodlines lineages that do have you know and to an extent i think we all have the ab ability to shape shift i think it's a because consciousness isn't concrete um, and it's what you do with it. I mean, angels are shapeshifters, right? Um, but we have, and we talked about Emma Burt, you know, so much the Georgia werewolf, you know, was she a lineage that, you know, could shapeshift into a werewolf. And I'll tag that video down below, guys, if you missed that, because that's a fascinating story. So um, it's just, there's just so much more. I, I don't think any of us have junk DNA. I, I think there's way more to our world than we than we imagine. And I think, yeah, you're right. I think if we keep talking about this stuff, it normalizes it. And so it's not so shocking. It's not so shocking, yeah. you know, so. I think too, like, like one of the first things I said with there being, or I see it as there's organic ones and then ones that have been like made in a lab. And like you said, the, the ones that are capable of shape shifting, I would see those as being like the organic ones, you know what I mean? They have consciousness. Um, right. And the, the, the ones who are made in a lab, they probably just are what they are and they probably don't shape shift. I don't, I would see them yeah. just being. They, they're they uh, a dog man and they stay a dog man. They might can go in and out of portals, but they can't like sh shape shift into something else. Right. Well, there's there's a difference. We talk about it a lot, too, within the community about the difference between werewolves and dog men. And then we've also got the skinwalkers. OK, so there's all these different facets to it. But then also bring in this really interesting thing called cloning. OK, and uh, and that comes up a lot, uh, especially in my remote viewing data when it comes to things like the giants, uh, like the giant of Kandahar. Uh, when I was remote viewing that target, I was seeing that there was something being taken 
uh, for DNA, for cloning, uh, they, they needed a sample of whatever this was I was looking at for cloning purposes. Okay, so I think that they're taking, I mean, who's to say they haven't taken all these dogmen and werewolves or whatever and cloned them for, I mean, they could have a clone army of dogmen for all we know. I don't know. Sounds crazy, but. Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing shocks me anymore at this point. Like, I'm just waiting for the alien invasion. Like, I'm on my seat, just waiting. <laughs> Like, I'm just, I can't wait for it. Like, if it's going to happen, I want to be alive when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I got my iPhone ready to go. Um, yeah, it's, you know, when you think about, I think about a lot about the mythology. I'm, I'm working on a series with my friend Hillis um, about the lost land of Mew. And there's a lot of, of, of conversation about hybrid animals that lived on this, like in another Atlantis that a lot of people don't talk about. And, and there was mention of the Ramayana, which is a book I've studied a lot of. But in the Ramayana, there's this Hanuman. I actually have, I have Hanuman on my necklace right now. He's the monkey god um, who defeats Ra, one of the demons. And you look at a lot of like the Hindu mythology and they have Ganesh. They have a lot of these animals that are perfectly capable of, of living amongst human beings. So it makes me wonder is, was there a time in our history where this was really a thing? And, and you know, the... Jersey Devil just hung out with humans on the Jersey Beach, right? Yeah. Getting suntan. Like, it, when did the division and the separation happen? And um, and you know, it's it's um, it's just it's just interesting to contemplate like the origins of this and like how we became so disconnected from the reality. What what we see as reality isn't really reality, and what we believe as fantasy is actually reality. I mean, look at Grimm's fairy tales. You know, the Grimm's brothers. You know, where, where I should try to become friends with this beast over here. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Be careful. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, back if you could look at old world maps, uh, they sh they will show uh, areas like even I think Tartaria, like the Tartarian maps and stuff. They'll show areas and regions of where they had communities of dog headed men and dog headed people, and they had blimmies. If y'all know what blimmies are, uh, it's like humanoids. They look like humans, but they don't have a head. Like they're from the neck up, they're, there's no head, but the face is in the chest. Okay. Like they say those things actually existed. Um, and unicorns and dragons and all that stuff. Uh, there was an active cover up at some point in our history to erase all of that. I mean, we don't have giants in our history books. Oh. You know, and that, that was just a couple of generations away, like, yeah. you know, before us. Yeah. If you look at all the Tartarian pictures, there are giants in them. Um, mermaids. Mermaids have come back up again. A lot of speculation about mermaids and people who are half fish. And that, of course, goes back to the Sirius star system. The, the Dogon people still, still talk, you know, they still get information because they've been kept pretty. Oh, the mermaid. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there, may be, hey, there could be a lake mermaid at the land between the lakes i don't know i've been looking into a lot of lake mermaids lately and uh there's there's lake mermaids out in lake pyramid in nevada you guys look at lake pyramid i i did a show on it i i that was one of my remote viewing targets there's a spiteful mermaid and the water babies in that lake and right beside that lake there is a submarine base in nevada why why would there be a submarine base there they say there's tunnels that go into the ocean yeah i said on uh, on the lbl number one video i mentioned i i was imagining submarines being able to go yeah. down far enough and yeah. pop up like around this area they probably do for all we know i mean that's a big lake yeah i so think I, there's if we go missing <laughs> Yeah. Uh, regard like are any of them maybe i'm not the beast but would you say are there any cryptids that there's a potential to like for a human to befriend it and vice versa i mean you you could i wouldn't you know um i think that they're so elusive they don't want to be seen at all and uh and as a matter of fact from what i've been told they're like the i think it's the northern part of lbl or it could be vice versa but it's like the sasquatch stay on one side and the dogmen stay on the other end because they don't get along now there's been stories and i don't know the validity of these stories but of of the sasquatch ordering the dogman to do stuff you know stuff so i don't know at the lbl okay. i mean this this stuff goes deep and it in the rabbit hole is pretty deep on this 
Um, but also there's a lot of misinformation and plants and God knows what. So we who, who knows? But I can tell you what the remote viewing data said. And that's that's my part in all of this. Well, I will say uh, we talked about this, Jessica, when we were up um, at the Bigfoot conference, you know, the Cassiopeians have said that and this is a danger, too, because you don't know who the cryptids are connected to um, and that a lot of Bigfoots are actually the pets of the greys, which to me is wild because the greys are smaller than they are. So they're like so they are under the command of the greys. It's mind control, probably. Yeah. I mean, probably that would be my opinion. Jessica, have you ever remote viewed the Jersey Devil? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I remote that, just about everything. Is that I what have? Is that is it that? Is it remote? Well, is it I actually thought I was remote viewing a goat man when I was remote viewing it because I was seeing what looked like a goat man. Uh, the one, I, the one I was seeing, I don't b believe it had wings, but it looked like it just looked like a goat man. And and so, but through the through that target, I was seeing there's a whole bunch of different types of. Yeah. Jersey devils and there's there's a bunch of them there's not just one yeah because yeah. some people will see the goat with wings others see what looks like a goat man I was I was actually remote viewing one particular incident of a family that got accosted by the Jersey devil that was walking on their roof one day or one night so that was my target and uh and so yeah it was it was more like a goat man but they called it the Jersey devil yeah I've covered it a long time ago on my channel but I came to the conclusion that there was more than one there's um, a bunch there's a bunch um, and it's kind of like the moth. Some of them kind of sound like the Mothman, you know, like mm -hmm. the same type of. So, God, I, I'm sure there's even cryptids that we don't even know about that probably have, you know, that are still exist. I know the Chupacabra. I think it's the Cassiopeians. I think they're the ones that say the Chupacabra is basically just waiting in case humans don't survive each other. That like it can come back up <laughs> and like produce its breed. Oh man. Okay. I was, that was one of my blind targets too. And, uh, and when I got done with that target, <clears throat> I had picked up on, and, and my, the target was actually the Chubacabras from 1994, I think that escaped a lab in Puerto Rico. Okay. And, uh, and it was during a hurricane. Well, I was picking up on, I, I got the hurricane was in my data of, of an escape. I was picking what I thought what I was looking at were dinosaurs, but I was also picking up on re reptile and mammal at the same time. And all this stuff was in this data. And when I got done, my friend Barry was like, okay, what do you think this is? I said, well, it's definitely a dinosaur. He, I was like, I think it's a dinosaur. And he was like, whoa. So what it is, uh, it, it's some kind of chimera that was made in a lab. And uh, and they did escape. These, these This is the original chupacabra because there's different. You see a dog type chupacabra now too, uh, is depicted as a chupacabra. But this thing looked like a gray alien with spikes down its back with kangaroo legs and it was a marsupial but it was also reptile on the top like reptilian so and it, and it had the thing uh the pro proboscis is that I, I don't remember if that's how you pronounce it or not but it's some kind of tongue that comes out like a mosquito has and it sucks blood out of the cows and the the livestock with its tongue but these were 100 percent made in a lab and my data coincided 100% with another remote viewing group who had remote viewed these with John Vavinko back in the day. So do you think cool that, the, that, the, that the dark arts people that they take kindergarten pictures where kids have drawn crazy creatures and they go, we're going to make this because it's <laughs> such a hodgepodge of like, yeah, that's wild. We're, we're really living in Jurassic Park, aren't we? Like this is legit Jurassic Park we're living in. Yeah crazy yeah for sure well it, it's a lot of these things are like abominations if you want to call it that you know it's stuff that shouldn't be here probably human mess um, humans mess with yeah. well that's the thing again the with the skinwalkers the navajo people i love the way they taught their children about magic like magic is real it exists and you can either practice magic for the light or you can practice magic for the dark you have to make a choice the the light works with nature the light works with nature to help people get through their existence. The dark, however, is going to manipulate na nature. And what do we see with, with things? These are man-made, crazy cloning, crazy creations in a lab. It's not created by nature or God. So now the, the diff now my, my question goes, is there a consciousness? Because if there's a consciousness in it, then we need to be a little respectful of the fact that the consciousness that found the body is a sparkle of a, sp a fractal of God. But you know, it just it gets complicated and it's crazy. And you know, gosh, sometimes I look at people who are just content to watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians and I'm just like, I'm jealous. I know. But I mean, how can anybody be bored? That's my question. I've never been bored. I can't remember the last time I was ever bored. 
because there's so much to do and so much to talk about, so much to look into. And I don't have enough minutes in my day. I really don't. So with all this craziness, I love it. This was fun. I know we're over an hour now, you guys. I want to do more shows with the two of you because this is just wild stuff. So, um, yes, you guys, please make sure that you go. I'm going to put an introduction on YouTube. So I'm just going to go and put this on Rumble because this is some really heavy stuff. Um, make sure, again, I'm going to put all the links down in the description box. So make sure that you are subscribed to Derek and to Jessica if you're not already. And go to the Gnostic link to see part one of this video of Land Between the Lakes. And I... I mean, Jessica, Derek, would you guys want to take requests from the audience? Like if there's stuff they want yeah. to look into and talk about, like crazy, crazy stuff. That would be fun. Yeah. Sure. What other people are experiencing in their own. If you've seen something in your backyard, the good news is you're probably not crazy. <laughs> right. Probably not crazy. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Well, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode. Yeah. Anytime. Thank yeah. you for having us. Of course. And we will convene very shortly. You guys for another video. Bye everybody.